All right, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I want to give honor and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Baha Hapadash, Yahweh Lam Young. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who will teach you what one of last days and who are the true leaders of the nation of Israel. I want to give a strong Shalom to the Akim on the four comes of the earth for supporting the truth and sincerity, making the calling like you serve, to seal the elect. And I'm going to give a humble salutation to the host of the elect tuning in on the four comes of the earth. Uh, we have a habitation at Biyah. This is Brother Michelle. We're back at you for the explanation of lesson. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashi Nashah, I'm going to take the water. Yahweh Bashi Nashah, to give the spirit and have have the mercy for allowing me to do this lesson. And, um, you know, I was just uh, kind of just driving and meditating, just kind of, you know, playing back the scriptures in my head. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, I was thinking of the scriptures, so I had to look it up real quick. I paraphrased it in my mind. But it's Proverbs 7 and 10, right? Um, and it says, uh, you know, that uh, he, uh, there was a woman uh, with an attire of a harlot, you know, and she is, uh, you know, uh, loud and stubborn, you know, and that's what, um, you know, that's what the definition of a nigga woman is. All right. Now, a lot of our, a lot of the women that are uh, in, the, in the troop, some of them still have that, that nigga woman mentality, you know, say, so even though they put a, a dress on and a hair wrap on, they still have that, that nigga womanish mentality, man. All right. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's about really, you know, undoing all, everything that you learn. You can't, you know, you can't, as women, you can't undo some things and not all the things. And as men, you can't still have one foot in the world and then trying to teach somebody the scripture. Like, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not possible. All right. So what I really wanted to touch on was the, the spiritual aspect of an attire of a harlot. All right. Now the attire of a, of a harlot back in the old days, you know, you knew a woman was a harlot because, uh, you know, uh, she wore a veil over her face. All right. So that lets you, that lets you know, uh, what her, her profession was. All right. So now, you can't really tell, you know, well, mostly, you know, all women is, is harlots anyway, you know what I'm saying? Really, no, you know, uh, no one's a, no woman is a virgin, no woman is a uh, shame face, you know, stuff like that, you know, but the, the spiritual aspect of, of not dressing like a harlot, man, all right? Because when you dress like a harlot, uh, you know, well, that the harlot is the King James way of, uh, or the, the, uh, the, uh, the king's English way of saying a, a, you know, a hoe or a hoochie, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, the spiritual aspect of, of, of dressing modestly, man, is very important, man. All right, because the, the, you are what you present yourself as. So you can't, you know, be as, well, I'm a, I'm, I want respect. And uh, you can't be a woman out here and talking about, you know, I want respect. You know, I want, I want a man to treat me right when you, when you, you don't even treat yourself right. You know, you don't even respect yourself. You know, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's funny, uh, Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, uh, uh, back in the day, uh, had a stand up and, um, you know, he was talking about, you know, uh, how, how people, especially women, dress as, hor uh, as whores, but then when you, when you talk to them like a whore, they, uh, you know, they get offended. You know what I'm saying? So he, <laughs> so he was uh, basically saying, you know, like, you know, uh, you like you, women have whores uniforms on, so that way you are gonna pre present yourself as a whore. You know, you, you don't you don't see a man, you know, uh, dressing a, a cop uniform, and then when you go tell him that you've been robbed, you're just saying, well, you know, I'm not really a cop. I'm just dressed like this. You know, that was part of the stand-up. You know, he, he said it funny, uh, you know, funny than what I said it. But hey, you know, uh, that's the truth, man. A lot of women want respect, but they don't even respect themselves, man. You know, because they have that nigga that nigga woman mentality. They have that mentality, well, I'm gonna dress how I wanna, how I wanna dress. I'm gonna do what I wanna do, and that's gonna be that, you know? But this is why we have the, the laws that you Commandments, you know, to uh, to uh, live by, you know. So when the scriptures say in Deuteronomy 22 and 5, you know, that a man should not uh, put on, 
a woman should not wear, uh, you know, a man's garment, and a man should not wear a woman's garment. Roughly paraphrasing. You know, it's spiritual, man. It's a reason why you have Bashmi Ashai uh, put that in there. You know, it wasn't uh, to, uh, you know, to, uh, I guess you could say to, uh, you know, just overdo it. No, no, all the, all the judgments and laws are true and faithful, man. All right, because when women put on tight pants, you know, especially putting on pants in general, man, that gives you that uh, 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 a male mentality. All right, and when men put on women's garments, that gives them a feminine mentality. All right, so when you're, when, so when a woman is dressed, um, you know, uh, immodestly, you know, in First uh, Timothy two and nine. It talks about the uh, the woman should be dressed modestly. All right, so that's the exact opposite of an of a of the of an attire of a harlot. Okay, because uh, in uh, in um, in Leviticus, uh, I think it's Leviticus 21, 19, so like you, Leviticus nineteen, it talks about you know that uh, we're not supposed to suffer sin upon our neighbor, man. So when you so when a woman is wearing a harlot attire, what does that do? That's making men lust after her. All right, it's, it's making men uh, want want her sexually. All right, and especially if she has a husband. You know, it's, it's you know it's crazy. You know, a lot of times you see these women dress up like a damn whore, and then but they got wedding rings on, man. You know, like that shit's cute. You know what I mean? But that's that that's uh that's gonna get you destroyed, man. All right, we're, women are supposed to be dressing uh, modestly, man, to not attract attention. You know, I know a lot of our women have uh, curves, but hey, you do what you can to cover up those curves, man, because those curves are for your husband. You know, them, them tight pants and booty shorts—that's an attire of a harlot, man. You know, crop tops with your titties hanging out. Oh, that's an attire of a harlot, man. Oh, that's for your, for your husband. You know, when you open, when you when you show that out, all you want, it looks like you're an attention whore, man. You know, and then and then you know the first thing a woman says, well, I'm not looking for attention. I'm just dressing how I want to dress. No, you're looking, you're searching for attention because if you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, if you if you didn't want attention, you wouldn't be wearing no stuff like that. All right, and uh, and, and Zephaniah. Uh, I think in chapter two of uh, the first or second chapters, uh, it says that uh, that he, that that Yahweh Meshach will cut, but punish uh, the princes and the king's children and anyone that's, that's clothed in strange apparel. All right, so if you and, and dress as a harlot, you know what I'm saying you, you're going to be you're dressed in strange apparel, man, because our women are commanded to to to, uh, to dress modestly. All right, all those uh, you know uh, spaghetti strap. Shirts, you know, all that's out the window, man. You know, in the world, you was taught, you was taught that, you know, skin was in, man. Well, no, the more skin you in, the more sin you in. You know, that's why a woman's supposed to be, uh, you know, have a modest, a modest dress on. You know what I mean? And and you know, and hey, if you if you got if you got jump in your trunk, man, buy a cardigan, man. It's not it's not that simple, man. I mean, it's not that hard. If you know, buy a cardigan, man. If you, if if it's that, if, if if you got jumpy your trunk. All right, we're supposed to be. Uh, oh, I'm about to say, he about to pull out. You know, it's not that hard, man. You know, we're supposed to be doing these things for you. How busting me out, shot, man. You know, and then uh, you know, uh, just one more thing about being loud and stubborn. You know, uh, uh, a nigga woman is loud and stubborn, man. A nigga woman don't know how to, to a, a nigga woman dressed like a whore and, and, and won't shut her trap. You know, this is why they put uh, nigga women on TV, man, to teach our woman that this is the norm for uh, for for uh, uh, for Eve, right? But the scripture in Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiasticus uh, says that a quiet and shamefaced woman is a double grace. Okay, um, it's a scripture, uh, I'm paraphrasing, 
but it says that a, 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 a woman of, that, of uh, many words is uh, uh, is like quicksand, I guess you could say, uh, to, a, to a man uh, with few words. Roughly paraphrased. I think that's uh, Sirach 25 and around the, the you see the Sirach 20, I think Sirach 24, 24 or 25 around the 20th verse, somewhere around there. You know, so you know we we don't women are supposed to get out of that that nigga woman mentality, man. You know the things that we that we that you see on TV ain't is it how that's how Esau wants you to be, man. Loud, obnoxious, drunk. You know, being a whore, sleeping with every man. You know, living your best life. Do uh you know living your life before you get tied down. All oh, that's wicked, man. All right, so, you know, uh, so that's why I was just meditating on that. Yeah, Proverbs 7 and 10, you know, in the next couple verses down, she's loud and stubborn. She abide of not in her house, you know, always want to go to the club, always want to be out all type of night. Man, this is the definition of a nigga woman, man. You want to be, you want to, you want to know how to be a righteous woman? Read Proverbs 31, uh, chapter, uh, verse 10 on down. That's how you be a real woman. You know, read Second uh, First Timothy chapter two and verse nine, right? Read uh, uh, Titus chapter two and um, uh, it's like I can't remember where exactly it's at, but uh, Titus chapter two. All right, about the aged woman teaching her, uh, teaching the young woman how to be uh, sober and uh, and to love her husband, man. All right, that, that was just something real quick on my mind. I wanted to, you know, get out there and, uh, you know, most high willing since edifying. Uh, I want to I give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakaha Kodash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, on to Kwame Yashirala, Ababa Ball, Shalom.